here at Narambi, Papua New Guinea. Um, some missionaries just came back. We're doing a Bible, well not dedication yet today, but we're flying in a bunch of Bibles today. They haven't been in here for a few years, I think three years or so, but they spent many, many, many years here. So everybody's super excited to see them. And I'm excited just to be able to be a part of this as well. We're gonna go ahead and unload everything here for these guys. I just have a flight up to Ayura by myself to pick up one person up there. I had more flights today, but they were just canceled. But man, is this runway slick today. Let's get this stuff unloaded and uh, we'll get out of here. I think it's like a 15 minute flight over to Europe, so really not much. Thanks today. Unloaded now, now we got to go ahead and clean up the cabin, put our net underneath. That's some of the reasons why I do that most of the time, if not just roll it up, is if I were to have an accident and I need to climb out the back, I don't want it kind of tying me up and things like that. So I'm gonna get out of here and clean this up for our next flight. Well, I just got word there's actually a hurt person here. Typically I bring extra seats. Today I had told them yesterday to put extra ones in and then they didn't. And then it was kind of, the plane was already loaded, so I was like, oh yeah, whatever. Of course, this is the day that someone got hurt and needs to be flown back to Goroka. So they're contemplating if they're sending him or not while I finish up. If so, I can only take one, unfortunately, because I have one passenger in a year to pick up. So we will see. Another man? Moses. Moses. Come to find out, one passenger actually wants to go to a year, which is perfect. The other one wants to go to Goroka. So, one to go into Garoka. Ayura, he's jumping off. I'm picking up another one there. Let's get loaded and get out of here. Let's go ahead and figure out what the rates are. Now I have two people, one that goes to Ayura and one onto Garoka, the sick person. So let's find out what we can do for them for a standby rate. Narambi is 370 Kina for standby to Garoka. And Ayura, 290 Kina. Okay, so you end up locating 16 kgs low seat rate, and on top, M3 Kina 70 Toilo 11 kg. So buy me scaly more past time. All right, look out! All right, we got 680 on the fuel. There's on fuel pump on and low start. Over 14%. One of these for fuel. Make sure we don't have any dogs walking out here. Right, ITT is coming up a little quicker today just because it's a little warm. Pause system test. Okay. Right. Generator on, prop forward, alternator on, and ox bus. Another airplane just flew over, but I think he's heading out down the hill to Sambari. Here is our weight and balance for today. These two guys in here already, and they're 45 kgs of weight underneath. So we have 410 pounds of cargo and packs. And so my total is 5580 and 5580. So we are good to go on that realm. All stations in Arambi, 120.7, Kodiak, November, Tango, Kilo will be back taxiing for departure, Ayura. All stations, Ayura, or correction, Narambi. Morsby 6622, November, Tango, Kilo, taxi. November Tango Kilo, Mozi, go ahead. November Tango Kilo, taxi, Narambi, Ayura, 3 PLB. November Tango Kilo, traffic metal for golf, caravan departed. So we are both for Simbari, is uh, at Simbari now, we we'll call again on the ground. Copy traffic, November Tango Kilo. Uh, this airstrip out here today is so slick. They've been, it's, they said it rained all yesterday. It looked wet, but it just doesn't drain off very well. So it's just like, kind of like skidding hydroplaning. Here's the second parking bay. 
and I was still sliding at this point. This is like two thirds of the runway down. Still kept it in high idle just so I could have a little bit more thrust push me back. Uh, it was very slick. It's a little bit soft down here. Yes, it is. I can feel it. I want to turn around now because I am light and I do not want to go all the way to the end right through his really soft spot. Come on. No, you want to turn around. Wow, oh, yeah, that's super slick and really soft right here. All right, our fuel caps are on, our fuel, our caps are good, our selectors are good, our controls are all good. We'll turn off our taws for takeoff, our flaps are set, indicated and verified at 20. Let's get our trim set up. All right, we're going to be, let's say we're pretty light, 45 knots at least by that first yellow cone up there. If we're not increasing quickly, then we'll go ahead and stop on the runway. With a heavy reverse, at that point it's going to be get a decision quick because it's super slippery out. After takeoff, we'll pitch for 85 knots, consider our EPL, consider feather, otherwise cut off, pull off, and shut off. Potentially zero degrees of flaps as we coast down to Sambari, and that's what I'll be shooting for. 85, 84 flaps. All right, ignition inlet and lights are done. 23 degrees, 5,000, so that's basically the same as Garoka, so 1390, 1440. Ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses, checklist is complete. And then power slowly, so don't start sliding. I'm sliding, let's go. 1390, oh, it is soft. Air speed's alive, there's 45 right there, continuing. This plane takes off, or needs a little bit more power than Echo and Zulu, it feels like. You can see there's already a lot of clouds and they're starting to move in this way. And that's what they were forecasting for today, and like this place, once it once it piles in, like it doesn't move for the rest of the day. Oh, let's just hug these clouds here as we do a 180 to get out of here. Right at 740 on the ITT. Got to get up to about 7,300 to get over the ridges behind me. So about 2,000 feet more than what I am now. Let's do a cleanup. Or over 90, we'll go zero degrees, pull our prop on back, and take a look behind us. All right, let's go ahead and pitch up for our 99 knots, the best rate. We might have to go up to a little bit steeper just so we can make sure that we get over this. I've got a thousand yet to go, and about five miles, I guess. So yeah, we should make it fine. Morsby 6622, November Tango, Kilo departure. Go ahead. November Tango, Kilo, departed Narambi 4-5. We'll be tracking 017 on climb below 9 or 1,000. Estimating at Euro 0-2. November Tango, Kilo, copy 9,000. Right, this is the Narambi gap here. It's at 7,000 feet, or really close to that. It's only a 15-minute flight. There's really not a lot of sense in going all the way up to 9,000 if we don't need to, because the next gap I need to get across is also at like 7,000. So we're just going to go, and we're on a VFR flight plan today, so we're just going to go ahead and just stay below our 9,000. And once we're up to about 130 knots indicated, we'll, as always, just start pulling our torque on back to 1250. I always pull it back to like 1270 and just let it sit and then it kind of slowly works from there and it usually settles in like right now it's we bounce between 1240 and 1250 so all right so this is actually like the nicest day we have had in weeks like we've not had blue skies like this yet so we have got basically just a straight line right over there and like I was saying that gap the next gap is at like 7,000 or something so let's get our taws enabled again 
And as I was mentioning, like if you guys are flight simmers or you're not, but you would maybe like to learn how to, then I actually have a Kodiak course where I go through a few hours, similar to the stuff I do now on these videos, but it's a lot more precise and a lot more um, on very specific items. So if you've never flown before, it's a great for you. If you have flown, it's still good for you because it has a lot of intermediate stuff as well, a lot of G1000 stuff if you've never flown with these. How to set it up, where to find things, where to move your eyes to, how to shoot an approach on here, how we set up the Kodiak. So if you're really wanting to learn how to fly the Kodiak specific, flight simulator, this is gonna be perfect for you. So there's just a link down below. And then, like I said, I have like probably 100 different flights with all the information on my Patreon page as well, under the commercial tier. Let's go ahead and bring up the strip chart here for Ayura. We're gonna be landing runway 14, it's just a one-way airstrip. As we come in, kind of from this direction, the runway is gonna be kind of going the opposite way. So basically, just be lined up perfectly for a left down, a correction, a right downwind. I know I made a mistake last time, it's a right downwind. Um, and it's a 2% slope and 1,300 meters nearly, so super long. Not anything special. Oh, in my last video, I think, I flew over a crashed World War II airplane right at the bottom of these rivers right here. Really cool. First time I had ever seen it as well, so if you want to check that out, I thought that video was one of my better ones. Uh, it was a lot of on-the-ground content out at Samogu, doing helicopter runs and stuff. Really enjoyed filming that for you guys, so if you haven't seen, be sure to check that out. I'll see if I can link a video just down below for that, because I thought it was one of my better ones. Really interesting content with a bunch of cameras on the helicopter and things like that. So if you like more on-the-ground content, leave a comment down below that you guys like that. And then also... I have a lot more on the ground content on my Patreon page just for exclusive videos for members as well as E3 members. You guys get all the same stuff. If you're not familiar, go check out some links down below explaining what that is. It's, it's a pretty cool membership platform here uh, back in the States. Okay, I am 20 miles out. 10 miles out is when I'm going to start giving them calls, let them know I'm getting closer in. Turn off our right fuel because this plane likes to burn off the right. First, All right, let's turn our taws off as we head over top of this mountain. Autopilot off as, as we have our taws off. Fins are ahead of me, so potential downdrafts, but it's five knots, but I'll climb up just a tiny bit. All stations are Ayura, Kodiak, November, Tango, Kilo, two, or correction, one, seven miles to the south, 8,000 on descent for Ayura, estimating Ayura time zero, one, via the Penampra Gap. I think that's what it's called. November Tango Kilo Sierra, India Delta, we're six miles south of Ayura, 8,900 on climb, not above 1 to 0, 000 for the Marawaka Gap. November Tango Kilo. Right, there's the other plane right there, if you guys can see that. He's heading out to Marawaka, about the same area that I just left. Uh, Morsby Hotel. We're 13 miles out. Let's hit our OBS button here and turn to runway 14. I'll put a nice little line right there for my runway orientation. And if just if you guys are wondering, yes, I did ask these guys if they cared if they were in a video or not. I do. I don't normally film with passengers, but today I was already filming one, and then they came up and said, "Hey, can I come?" So. I was like, well, do you guys care if you're in a video? And they're like, oh, no, not, not at all. So I did ask them if you guys are wondering. <laughs> Told them how they can find the video so they can watch it themselves. Okay, I see Ayura up there. You got a hill up there with trees on the right side and grass on the other side. And then that's kind of like where if I just kind of head right down that area, I'm basically joining into a right downwind perfectly. So we're going to go on down. We're going to go on down to 6,100 for pattern altitude. Touchdown is 5,100, same as Garoka. All stations are here at 1207, Kodiak, November, Tango, Kilo, four miles to the southwest. 
joining into a right downwind. Ayura. Our prop down. We'll get our harness, our correction, our harness yeah, done. And we will do our prop here in just a minute. Once we get below 138 knots is when we'll... Actually, you know, I'm going to put my prop forward now to help slow on down a little bit. There we go. Now I get 10 degrees of collapse in. There's 20 degrees of flaps. Probably coming closer to 70 knots just because uh, it's so long. Delta, 1207. Morsby 6622 November Delta, Tango Delta, Kilo Delta, in this Delta, circuit. Delta, I hear a cancel SAR. November Tango Kilo, I hear a SAR terminated. November Tango Kilo. All right, cancel it now. That way I can turn him off. We're 68 or 6,000 now. We're a little bit high. Because there's the tower, and we wanted to be around 5,800, but we're not really quite to it yet, so that's okay. We're slowing down to 80 knots here on our base. 88 knots now. Up and harness is done. Landing clearance is done. All stations are Euro November 10 Kilo, base 1-4 Euro. Go full flaps now. And is just not wanting to slow down today. I'm just so light. I have two knots ahead of him, but man, it sure does not 500. feel like it. It's like I'm just getting pushed in. I'll come through this little gap right here in the trees. They're just, they have a displaced threshold here. Probably, I don't know, a few hundred meters in. Usually a lot of a wind shear at this place, but it doesn't look like there's much wind today. We'll plan on touching down around the threshold. Or the displaced threshold, I should say. All right, three knots of headwind. There's a sinker. A bit fast. Let's right, float for a while. There we go. A low idle. That was a quick little flight. I hope you guys enjoyed the beginning. That was a little bit different, unique for me as well. I always have people dancing for us when we arrive, and chanting and singing. So that was pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. So 